Happy Sabbath Church, and welcome to this beautiful Sabbath morning worship. In our worship today, we are blessed that the service is filled with, filled with a lot of prayers, songs, and wonderful words of God. And as we worship today, let me inform you that we are worshiping from the campus of Freedom South Adventist University here in Germany. And before we start our service, I have a very short announcement for you. And this announcement is going to be uh, given to us by our chaplain and our pastor, Stefan and, and, and Dietmar. And so let's go take this quick announcement and come back. But before we start everything, let us have a word of prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for this beautiful Sabbath morning. Oh Lord, it's a privilege for us to be able to worship together far and near. The Lord, you have blessed us with the gift of communion, the gift of worshiping, the gift of fellowshipping together. And for this, we are grateful and we say, may your name be praised. Lord, we commit our worship service today in your hand that you take absolute control and lead us in this service, that in the end we will be blessed through the name of your son, Jesus Christ. I pray with thanksgiving. Amen. So now we will go and listen to uh, what this announcement is all about uh, from Dietmar and Stefan. Thank you very much. Happy Sabbath. And today we want to give you more information about the Lord's Supper. We find ourselves in extraordinary circumstances. And the problem with communion service is that it is a deeply communal experience where we are together. And that's the exact thing we are not allowed to do right now. But we still would like to offer a communion service to you, our brothers and sisters. And so we've decided to do this digitally online. Somebody asked me, yes, fine, but why now? Well, two reasons. One is that the last communion service that we had here in Friedensau was in February. That's a long time ago. And some people, maybe even you, weren't able to take part then in February. And we don't want anybody to go through 2020 without having had any communion at all. But it's so close to Christmas, I hear you ask. Yes, it is. And that's not a problem because Christmas and what we celebrate in the communion service are not mutually exclusive. In fact, next week we want to highlight this connection between Christmas and the communion service. The service next week will be in two parts and it will be also in two languages. We have it together, the English and the German. And uh, so since several months we have two service and now we want to come together in the Lord's Supper. And um, we will translate this uh, in consecutive way. And uh, we will have the first part with sermon songs and uh, uh, children's story. And the second part, we will have the bread and wine. And between the first and the second part, we will have 50 minutes break. In this break, you can wash the feet with someone and maybe with someone at your home, with your, your spouse, maybe with your roommate. And um, that is uh, the time for this. And uh, the time in uh, the second time where we have bread and wine, that will be also in Zoom. And there you get more information later. How do you now get the emblems? How do you get the bread and the wine? We plan to organize bread and wine for everybody who lives in Friedensau. And we want to distribute it here uh, and in Papsdorf. So if um, you are here and you wonder, don't wonder. You will get a piece of bread and you will get some juice so you can partake in the communion service. And when you get the bread and wine, then you get also a Zoom link so that you can get in this part. But what about me who lives outside, further away from Friesau, I hear you ask. No problem. Here's an email address 
And I would like to ask you, if you live further away from Friedsau, I don't know, Berlin or even further, please email us and we can then we can get in touch with you so we can talk about how you too can participate in our communion service. We practice the open commune. And uh, so if you are from the other domination, then it is no problem. If you like to join, you can join. Because communion brings people together. It doesn't matter whether you're an Adventist or if you're from some other denomination. We want to come together to celebrate what our Lord has done for us. And so I invite you, as you look forward, as we look forward to next week, let's keep this prayer that the Lord will use this service to draw us not only closer to Him as we celebrate Him, but also closer to each other, mm -hmm. even though we can't see each other right now. God bless you. Have a happy rest of the Sabbath. And we hope to see you next week. Happy Sabbath and see you next week. Thank you very much. Thank you very much uh, for this information. It's very, very important. And it's a blessing that even within these times, we can still have the privilege of enjoying together wonderful communion with our Lord and Maker. Thank you very much, uh, Stefan and, um, and Dietmar for the information. So now we, be, we continue our service and we will have a very special song from the Mugusu family. This song has a lot of meaning and it's, it's a very beautiful song. I would like you to check if you can recognize the, 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 the language of that song and I'll tell you more about the song uh later okay so let's go to uh let's call our family the bugusu family to sing this special song for us now god bless you and sisters, sorry for that technical hitch, uh, as we, we, we prepare to bring you that song today, I just want to share with you something. You know, the Lord says, in all times, we have to give him thanks and glory. And in this situation, we also have to give him thanks and glory. Uh, the technical team is still putting everything together to, to let us enjoy uh, this music again. And so they will let us know and we will go back again to them for the special music from the Mugusu family. It's not amazing that through technology and everything, we are still able to worship together. So now we will take the music. <laughs>
prayer from our sister Hannah as uh, we prepare ourselves for the special prayer section. Today our prayer will be centered on all the sufferings and the struggles we are going through as, as a church and as children of God in these hard times. God bless you. Gather together. Thank you so much that it doesn't matter where we are and what time it is. Thank you so much that you are here amongst us to promise that if two or three are gathering in your names, you are amongst them. Thank you so much that you are a God who is interested in us, in our lives, in our small and big things in our lives, Lord. Thank you that we can bring everything in front of your throne and that you promise that you will hear us and listen to us. Lord, I kindly ask you to, to touch everybody's heart who is currently suffering. You know what they're struggling with, Lord. Please be with them. Please give them the strength to overcome whatever they're facing currently, Lord. Please touch them and heal them, Lord, and give them the courage, Lord. And you can just be a God who is unwilling himself in their lives, Lord. You can send other people to comfort them. You can yeah, you can just uh, be there and and touch their hearts and, and make them whole again, Lord. Lord, you see everybody who is who is sick and who is might might be affected by the COVID. Lord, please be also with that person and give them the strength and the healing mercies again, Lord, so that um, they recover and um that they can praise your name and glorify you also. Lord, you see everybody who is currently in a decision-making process, who has to decide something in their lives, please also speak to them, make them, yeah, your, your idea and your wisdom and your things clear that they know what you want them to do, Lord. 
please speak to them that they understand what you are uh, asking them to, to do, Lord. Lord, you see also all the people who are actually in uh, decision-making positions, Lord, all our politicians, people who have to decide things for our nations, for our governments, for our municipalities, Lord, please give them also the wisdom and guide them so that your name will be glorified, that you will be done, Lord. Please be with them, especially during that special time which we are currently in that, um, yeah, wise decisions are, are made, Lord. Lord, you see everybody who is happy and joyful. Yeah, we are also bringing joy to you and happiness, Lord. Thank you so much that you are, yeah, that you bring that to our lives as well and that we can glorify you and give thanks and adoration to you, Lord. Thank you for everything you are doing in our hearts, in our lives, and the small and big miracles, Lord. Just, yeah, open our eyes and ears for the small wonders and the things you're doing in our lives, Lord. Thank you so much. And I, I am so happy that you are God who is really interested in our lives, in me personally, in you personally, in everybody's lives, um, that you're just a God who is there and who wants to be yeah, having a um, personal relationship. I kindly ask that all in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy. Thank you very much, uh, Sister Hannah, for the wonderful prayer. Now, children, gather around. There is a special children's story for you. And our sister Ichie has a very special and wonderful story to share with you. Oh, I'm so curious. I hope you're also curious to hear this story. So let's go to our sister Iche for that special children story. Sister Iche, please tell us the story. Happy Sabbath, everyone, and gather around as I am going to tell you the children's story today about otters. There are about 13 species in the whole wide world of otters and America hosts two of those species. First, the sea otter and second, the river otter. I myself have a river otter with me today and I'm going to talk a little bit about the otter and what the otter has to do with God. So, you know, river otters live in rivers as their name, you know, um, but you know that otters float on the water. They actually turn around and they float on their back on the water. But why do they float on the water? Well, if we drop a stone in the water, you can see, it sinks very quickly. But an otter has really dense fur and there is air in his fur so that he is floating like a balloon on water. But another thing about otters is when they are floating around with their favorite friend, they tend to take each other by their hand to not float away. And this is the part where God comes in. Because the Bible also tells us in Isaiah 41 verse 13, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand saying to you, fear not, I will help you. I wish you a blessed Sabbath, and when you walk by the Eda today, remember my otter story. God bless you, God bless you, Sister Ichie, for the wonderful otter story, for the children's story. Hey, kids, I hope you got the reason why the otter floats on the river. Yeah, that's a very, very new information, even for me as well. That's why I love children's stories so much because I get to learn so much from these stories. Now we will take another special music. The title is, We, uh, uh, we Shall Overcome. And with this song, we prepare our hearts for the sermon today. The song will be ministered to us by our brother Gabriel and Atto, the pianist. 
So let's go to uh, Brother Gabriel and Arthur uh, for the music. God bless you. song. Thank you, uh, brothers Atu and Gabriel, for that wonderful song. Brothers and sisters, now pick your Bible with me, if you have a Bible, and open with me to 1 John, 1 John 1, verse 7. 1 John chapter 1, verse 7. I'm reading from the New King James uh, Bible. And if you are there, let us read together. First John chapter 1, verse 7. And it reads, For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and antichrist. I take that again. First John chapter 1, verse 7. For many deceivers have gone out into the world who do not confess Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. Today, the sermon is going to be ministered to us by our pastor, John Opechi. Our pastor is a student here in Freedom South, master student here in Freedom South. He is a spirit-filled man of God. And he's titled his sermon today, The Great Vassan. It is my prayer that we can mellow our hearts and our minds as this message comes to us. Before our pastor starts the sermon, let us have a quick word of prayer for him. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the opportunity that we can hear your word, even in these circumstances. 
We are imperfect human beings full with sin. And that, Father, these moments that we draw closer to you are the moments that we hear your voice and many other moments that you've given to us. And that is why, Lord, we come to you this morning committing our pastor, John, in your hand, that please, Lord, speak through him. The message you have for us, Father, minister through him to us. And let our hearts and minds for all those listening, all those watching right now, wherever we find ourselves, in our rooms, on the way, every corner on this earth that we are going to hear this message from, Father, keep us together and touch our hearts and minds so that the message will fall on good soil and grow within us. That, Lord, we can hear your word. Please set our Pastor John apart and speak through him. Whatever he loses through this sermon, please replenish it for him. We ask these and many other blessings in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our Pastor John will now minister unto us. God bless you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kweku, for the prayer. And I also want to thank all those who are behind the camera, all those who ensure that we have this program. It's a lot of work. I appreciate all of you, Gabriel, Robinson, and uh, even the chaplain, Dietmar. So happy Sabbath to everyone today. And um, it's, it's a blessed day because God has blessed today and we believe his blessings will be upon us. It's been a fascinating year and we can only be grateful for life. When we look back at the year 2020, we see a broken world, a world broken by a virus, a virus which has become pandemic. You know, at the turn of the new year, individuals and entities had plans. Many of such plans were canceled, postponed at best. And when you look at the figures, with over 70 million coronavirus cases the world over, and with about 1.6 million deaths resulting from it, the world is in desperate need of a solution. And when you listen to the news, we've been promised by scientists that vaccines are almost ready and that these vaccines will greatly reduce the mortality rate of the virus. Again, no one is completely sure of the efficacy of these vaccines. However, today, I want to talk to you about the greatest vaccine. It is not subjected to test by scientists, the way we do here, you know, before any of these vaccines can be used, they are thoroughly checked. But this one I present to you today is a different kind of vaccine. And that's why I've chosen as my uh, title this morning, The Greatest Vaccine. And you're wondering, is he going to talk about the vaccine? Is he going to talk about the controversies surrounding, you know, the use of these vaccines? That's not my assignment. I want to turn your attention to the Bible. There is a vaccine that we need to know, especially as we grapple with the effect of this pandemic. There is a vaccine that everyone on earth should know about. But before I tell you about this vaccine, I would like to tell you about the virus that caused this vaccine to be used or that brought about the idea of this vaccine. You know, coronavirus, is not the greatest virus. It may be a very dangerous virus, but I tell you, it is not the greatest virus. Coronavirus can isolate us from one another, but this virus I'm talking about today separates us from God. The Bible tells us in Isaiah 59 from verse one, that the Lord's hand is not shut that it cannot save. And his ear is not heavy, 
that it cannot hear, but our sins, our iniquities have separated between us and God. So this virus we are talking about today separates us from God. You know, COVID-19 can put you in isolation. I was there. I was in isolation. It's, it's, a, it's a very difficult thing. But it is not as bad as this virus, because this one separates you from God. And I also want to tell us that this virus breeds pain and sorrow and anguish. You know, COVID-19 brings fever and headache, but this one, it brings anguish and pain and sorrow and sadness. And then we are told in the Bible that everyone is involved. Like I told you, we have about 70 million people who have been infected by the COVID-19. But the virus that we are talking about today has affected everybody. Everyone is infected. Everyone is infected. And for those who are infected, they do not have peace. Isaiah 57 verse 20 tells us that the wicked are like the troubled sea when it cannot rest. And the Bible says, there is no peace to the wicked. So if you want to have peace of mind, then you must do everything to avoid this virus we are talking about today. There is none righteous, no, not one, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. It's becoming clear to us that the virus we are talking about is the virus of sin. And this is the greatest virus. And when the Bible says all have sinned, it means all. All means old and young, the rich and poor, educated and un uneducated. You know, it doesn't matter where you come from, European or African, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, you would agree with me that sin is the greatest virus. It is fatal and its mortality rate is 100%. Nothing human can flatten the curve of the spread of sin. You know, we talk about the curve of COVID-19, flattening the curve. But when it comes to sin, nothing here on earth can flatten the curve of the spread of sin. Sin is like cancer. It destroys from inside out. And we are all sin sick. And I wonder why sin is mildly spoken of in the church today. We pretend that all is fine, while many in the church are dying of this virus. You know, it's very usual that people get offended when their sins are pointed out. And because of this, many preachers have expunged the word sin from their preaching vocabulary. It's not there. It's not there. But God says to us in Isaiah 58 verse 1, cry aloud. Spare not, lift up your voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of Jacob their sins. This is what God is saying. God is saying the opposite of what we have today in the Christian world. God is saying there is a need to cry aloud. It's a life and death situation, friends. And God is saying that if we do not point out the effect of this virus in our lives, then it would lead to ultimate death. It would lead to ultimate death. And may I say this morning that any gospel, any preaching that attempts to minimize the enormity of sin is an insult to God. Did you hear that? Let me say it again. Any gospel, any preaching, any teaching that attempts to minimize to lessen the effect of sin is an insult to God because God knows the colossal damage that sin has caused. It was because of sin that God became man in order 
to save men. And that's the story of the incarnation. The story of the incarnation depicts the seriousness of sin, that God will become man in order to save man just because man sin. Let me take a moment to talk about those who deny the existence of the coronavirus. There are many who, who say it is not real. When you deny the existence of coronavirus, it is as good as denying the end part of sin if we were to compare both of them. Coronavirus is real, sin is also real. Coronavirus kills, the sin virus also kills. God became man in order to provide a cure for the sin virus. And I will say it again, it is an insult, a solemn insult for that matter to lessen the enormity of the very thing that brought Jesus down to it. And we have seen that there is so much mediocrity in the church today, so much of that. You know, in the church today, people are being comforted in their sin. And it seems we end up amusing the goat instead of feeding the sheep. I I'm saying, that we need to take this sin problem seriously. It brought down God himself. It took the intervention of God himself. So people should not come to church and feel comfortable in their sin. I, I, I want to believe that the church should be the place where sinners are restored to God. So if we do not point out sin, how can we work for the restoration of the souls of men and women? And you know, Christmas is, is almost here as the world celebrates its Christmas. But whatever it is, whatever Christmas is, I know for sure that the birth of Jesus is not about chocolate or Christmas light or candles. Jesus was born to provide a cure for the sin virus. You know, the Bible tells us in Matthew 1 verse 21, and she shall bring forth a son and his name shall be called Jesus for he shall save his people from their sins. And this is the incarnation. This is the birth of Jesus. This is Christmas as the world has it today. When we talk about the birth of Jesus, we should also talk about the reason he was born. And if ever the birth of Jesus should be celebrated, the celebration should remind us of the reason for his birth. He was born to save man from sin. How many think about sin during Christmas? I cannot say, I cannot say. Actually some commit sin in order to celebrate Christmas. If God says sin is serious enough to send Jesus, then it is. You know, though God loves sinners, he hates sin. And if ever God has a dilemma, that dilemma is how to destroy sin without destroying the sinner. This is God's dilemma. And you know, no one has suffered more than God because of sin. And no one has paid a greater price for sin than God. Just look at the cross. Look at the cross. Look at the cross on a hill far away. It stands that old rugged cross, that emblem of suffering and shame. Sin reached its climax at the cross. At the cross, the Son of God was killed. Sin brought Jesus down from his throne. Jesus came to save, but he could only do that by dying. So he was born to die. He was born to die. Sin put a crown of thorns on his brow. Sin spat in his face. Sin drove spikes into his tender hands. Sin killed the Lamb of God the one who takes away our sins 
the sin of the world. Jesus took our place that we might live while we took his place that we might not die. He died our death that we might live his life. He spilled his blood providing the vaccine for the sin virus. And that's the greatest vaccine because sin is the greatest problem that we ever had. I want to announce to you today that the blood of Jesus cleanses. His blood is God's vaccination against the sin virus. Oh, dear friends, oh, dear friends, there is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins, and sinners plunge beneath that flood, lose all their guilty stains. And we are told that the blood that Jesus shed for us way back on Calvary, the blood that gives us strength, from day to day it gives us strength, and it will never lose its power. It reaches to the highest mountains. It flows to the lowest valley. It can find you anywhere you are in your life. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. And now the question is, would you be free from the burden of sin because there is power in the blood? Would you over evil a victory again because there is power in the blood of the Lamb? Friends, sin is the greatest virus, but the blood of Jesus is greater than sin itself. Amen. What is sin? What is sin? Before I tell you what sin is, I'd like to tell you that we have not been redeemed with corruptible things, just as 1 Peter 1 verse 18 through 19 tells us. We've not been redeemed by silver or gold, but we've been redeemed with the precious blood of Jesus. In our key test today in 1 John 1 verse 7, the Bible says the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. And that is the greatest virus. Now, what is sin? The sin is not rocket science. The Bible tells us that whoever commits sin transgresses the law. For sin is the transgression of the law. Think about it. It was for the broken law of God that the body of Jesus was broken on the cross. Because God's law was broken, because man disobeyed God, because man followed his inclination, God's law was broken. And that law could not be abrogated. If the law could be abrogated, then Jesus wouldn't have come. Because God's law is a transcript of the character of God, God himself had to become man just to uphold his word, just to uphold his law. And that tells you how God takes his word. In Malachi 3 verse 6, God says, I am the Lord, I do not change. And Jesus would say in Matthew 24, verse 35, heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Let me pause for a moment and make this clear to us. You know, with the COVID-19 pandemic, many laws are being enforced to curtail the spread of this deadly virus. And the nations of the world have imposed lockdowns. There are lockdowns everywhere. Businesses have been closed. Public parks have been barricaded. Schools have been closed. You know, nose mask, facial mask, all these things have been, you know, have been enforced. And people obey. You know, when I take the train or the bus, everybody puts the face mask. Everybody does that. It's the law. Everybody obeys because the government is fighting this virus. So how do you think that the God who created us is a Nambi Pambi God who says what he does not mean 
or who doesn't mean what he says. And there are many who's, who think today that God's laws have been done away. How can God do that? I mean, if we can obey human laws to safeguard our lives, how much more? How much more God's eternal laws? How much more his laws? You know, when these laws are spoken of, we think that God is, is, is crazy. God says the Sabbath has to be on the seventh day. And the word says, no, 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 it has to be on the first day. They think God is crazy. God says, oh, marriage has to be between a man and a woman. And the word says, no, it can be between a man and a man. And they think God was drunk when he gave the laws. If we can obey the government not to even worship in the church, why are we online today? Basically, it's because we can't meet in the church. We obey the laws. Right? And when it comes to the laws of God, we begin to rationalize. But I want to tell us that the laws cannot save anybody. I don't believe the laws can save. The law of God points out sin. The only savior we have is Jesus. And he has done that by spilling his blood on Calvary. But you know what the law does? The law barricades us from sin. The law points us to sin. And the law points out sin in our life. Just the way your nose mask, you know, can barricade you from, from infection. The law is there to do just that. You know, God can keep us from falling. He can keep us from falling. I, I believe that Jesus died just to keep us from falling. And if we cannot live a godly life, we are putting the death of Jesus in question. The reason why he died, the Bible says, was to save us from sin. And if we continue in our sins, that grace may abound. It simply puts his death in a big question. As we begin to conclude, may I tell you that God's vaccine for sin is a threefold inoculation. You know, when, when, the, when the vaccine comes out, people will be inoculated. So God's provision, God's God's um, vaccine for this sin virus is a threefold inoculation. Uh, number one, God saves us from the penalty of sin. That's called justification. And that's God counseling our debt, our sin debt, because we have sinned. All of us have sinned. So when God begins with us, he begins by saving us from the penalty of sin, which is debt. Jesus died our death. That's justification. He paid the price for our sin. That's justification. He doesn't stop there. The next thing he does is to save us from the power of sin. Because sin can be overpowering. He gives us his grace to overcome sin. And that's called sanctification. That's God keeping us holy every day. And finally... He will save us from the presence of sin. And that's called glorification. That's when Jesus comes again the second time. And I hope the church still believes that he's coming again. So let's go through it. God saves us from the penalty of sin. That's justification. He saves us from the power of sin. That's sanctification. And he will save us from the presence of sin when he comes again. And that's glorification. And that is the threefold nature of this vaccine that God has provided from, uh, for, for sin. You know, sin fascinates before it assassinates. Sin is serious. Uh, many will be thinking, oh, the preacher is talking about sin. That's a personal thing. But I want to tell you that sin fascinates before it kills and destroys. A sin fascinated Judas with ungodly prophets before it assassinated him. A sin fascinated Samson with lust before sin plucked out his eyes. A sin fascinated Esau you know, with hunger 
before it robbed him of his spiritual blessings. How about Achan? You know Achan? Sin fascinated him with riches before it bound him with his household. You know, sin can be attractive and beautiful. And at times, sin is dressed intelligently. Sin is cultured. Sin is even reasonable sometimes. But that is only at the beginning. It will fascinate you before it kills you. Everyone knows that COVID-19 is serious, causing the death of millions already. But I tell you, sin is much more serious. Sin brought the flood in the time of Noah, and every living thing died except Noah and his household. Sin brought them fire from heaven on Sodom and Gomorrah. And that's an example of what God will do in the last days. It is called the strange art of God when sin and sinners will be destroyed. And I want to leave you with this question this morning. How shall we escape? How shall we escape if we neglect God's vaccine for sin? How shall we escape? Jesus is the only escape from the bondage of sin. You know, in Hebrews 2 verse 3, the Bible says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? The truth and the answer is that there is no other escape if we reject God's only offer for the salvation of man. In times like this, there is a savior. And that's a reminder this morning. In times like this, there is a savior. Though we have a pandemic in our, on our hands, but we have a greater, a greater problem, and that's a sin problem. Jesus is the solution. And what will you do with Jesus? Jesus says, come as you are. He will take you and clean you up. You don't have to wait until you are good before you come to Jesus. Come as you are. He will pick you up and he will create in you a new desire for holiness. Oh, friends, sin is not funny. Sin brings pain. Sin brings pain not just here. It brings pain here and in the hereafter. But Jesus wants to save you. Jesus wants to give you a new life. And I think the greatest love passage in the scriptures is found in John 3 verse 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Think about this test. God, the greatest being, loved and that's the greatest affection to love. That's the greatest affection you can ever think of. He loved the world, the greatest group of sinners. That's what we are. And then he gave, that is the greatest sacrifice, giving his only begotten son. And his only begotten son is the greatest gift heaven can offer. And then whosoever believes, that is the greatest inclusion. Everybody is there. It doesn't matter where you come from. You know, we talk about racism and the rest. But in God's plan, where you come from is immaterial. Whosoever believes, that is the inclusion that involves everyone, every one of us. And then should not perish. That will be the greatest damnation. God wants to save us from that. And then he says, those who believe will have everlasting life. And I believe that that is the greatest reward. Hallelujah. And all this is made possible by the greatest vaccine. And it is that blood that never loses its power. Oh, friend, let me talk to you personally this morning. As I talk to myself too, because we are all in this. I'm not better off. I believe that overcoming sin is a choice that I must make and is a choice that you must make. And if we make that choice, God gives us power. Because the Bible says in, in John 1 verse 12, if we receive him, he will give us power to become sons of God. There is power available. 
if we ask for it. There is power available if we ask for it. And and I I would say, you know, I wrote this down somewhere in my in my uh, jo in my jota. It says, "Do not go down the path of sin without giving it a fight." It doesn't mean that we can overcome sin by ourselves. It is a fight of faith. It is a Holy Spirit inspired fight. And because faith is a victory that overcomes the world, everyone who believes in Jesus would have power over sin and the temptations of Satan. By the way, we are told in James 4, 7, that we should submit ourselves to God, we should resist the devil, and he will flee from us. Satan can only solicit and entice us with sin. He can never compel us to sin. You know, he trembles and flees before the weakest soul who finds refuge in the mighty name of Jesus. As I close, I want to read to you what Ellen White has written to us in her book, Desire of Ages. Powerful, powerful quotes. Never shall the cost of our redemption be realized until the redeemed shall stand with the Redeemer before the throne of God. Then as the glories of the eternal home burst upon our enraptured senses, we shall remember that Jesus left all this for us, that he not only became an exile from the heavenly courts, but for us, he took the risk of failure and eternal loss. Then we shall cast our crowns at his feet and raise the song, worthy is the lamb that was slain to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and honor and glory and blessing. And I say amen to that. And I know you were saying amen wherever you are. Jesus broke our fall. You know, a story is told many years ago of a high rising building that was being finished. And the workers were up high on their scaffoldings. They were climbing up very high, you know, skyscraper. Then something happened. One of the builders fell from that incredible height. His fellow workers could not look down for the fear of what they would see because they believed their colleague would be in tatters. He fell from that height, but slowly they went down and to their amazement, though their friend was bruised, he was alive. He was alive. And then they saw him on a heap of soil. But by the side of that heap of soil, they saw a lamb crushed to death. What happened? As the unfortunate man fell from the scaffolding, a flock of sheep was passing by. And a lamb in the fold broke his fall. He fell on the lamb, breaking the lamb that he might live. Oh, dear friend, Jesus broke our fall. He's the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. But you know one thing? He would not always remain the Lamb. He will soon become the Lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, he is in the heavenly sanctuary ministering. He's there for us. He's there so we can appropriate what he has done on the cross for us. But very soon, he will lay off his priestly garments and he will wear his kingly garments and the lamb of God will become the lion of the tribe of Judah. But he will not come to destroy you if you believe in him. He will come to save you. He will come to save you. You know, it is about love. It is about love. The message of the cross is not about fear. It is about love. And I would say that love has lifted us. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deeply stand within. I was sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters he lifted me. Now I believe I am safe. And he will keep me safe because love 
lifted me. You know, my very dear friend Agape is going to sing this song in a very powerful way. I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Very deeply stayed we did, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea and my despairing cry from the words has lifted me now, said, Am I love lifted me? Love lifted me when nothing else could help. Love lifted me. me love lifted you love lifted us the love of god lifted us all praise be to god and thank you so much our sister agape all the way singing to us ministering to us from nigeria god bless you you see that is the beauty of this service we have brothers and sisters that we worship together all across the globe and it's amazing and and, and lovely that we can have songs from friends and loved ones all over the world. This is unique. This is amazing. This is, this is heartwarming. This is the meaning of fellowship. Even in times of trouble, love lifted us, or God's love lifted us and continue to do so for us each and every day. Thank you very much. And thank you so much, uh, our Pastor Jod, for the wonderful as a sermon that you've, you've given to us. Indeed, we need that true vassal. And that's what, I don't know about you, but that's the vassal I'm looking forward to, that Christ himself be my vassal. And brothers and sisters, very soon our service has come to an end, so soon. And, uh, but before we go, I want to continue reminding you to worship with us again next Sabbath. We worship from the campus of Freedom South Adventist University. If you want to know more about the university, go to the university website. If you type in Freedom South, F R I E N D S A U, uh, Freedom South, uh, you can know more about the university here. We have two services we have a German service and an English service on Sabbath. 
via Zoom and YouTube. And from these services, you can choose if your German is good enough, you can join the German service. And if you want to uh, join the service in English, you are also welcome. The German service starts from 10.30 to 11.30, 10 o'clock to 11 uh, 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 every Sabbath. And then the English service starts from 11.30 to 12.30. And today we have been blessed. We have been blessed a lot through all the music and everything. But as we start the coming week ahead, please let us share this benediction together. Our heavenly father, the creator of the universe, Lord, continue to lift us up with your love. Continue to be our God. And now for all of us gathered together and watching from wherever we are at the moment, may the Lord let his face shine upon you. May his countenance grace be upon you. May his blessings overflow you as you enter the coming week, as you prepare for the year end, as you go through the last days of the year. May the Lord continue to strengthen you. May he continue to uplift you. May he continue to be your God. May he continue to bring smile and joy in your heart. And may he guide our footsteps into the coming week and the days and the hours and minutes that we have. And when we gather here again next Sabbath in a wonderful, happy service, dear Lord, will be our God all through and through. God bless you. Amen. We thank the Lord so much for the service. And I look forward that we can worship again. Next Sabbath, again, please remember, we have a communion service and we're going to have a joint service together also. God bless you. And now let's take our last goodbye song from our brother Atu as he plays for us. And Atu and his team are going to give us this instrumental as we meditate on the service today. And we say goodbye. See you next Sabbath. God bless you.